I lured you in here with the spell of the bad bitch. I just posted a video on my page where I go into detail about how embarrassing it is at this point to be a bad bitch. Yeah, I said it. This whole acting bad scenario and this whole act acting bad life is full of shit. We have to decide, are we going to live the lives we actually want to live? Or are we going to keep being these bad bitches that are sex sexually unsatisfied, trying to get money from men who don't even have the money to give, and et cetera, et cetera, and so on and so forth, and everything that these city girls talk about. Not that I don't like Carisha and JT. I mean, they don't even write majority of their music anyway, so it's not even, they're just portraying a lifestyle. But when you really look at these women, are they really gen genuinely happy? The bad bitch lifestyle is the biggest gaslight of all time. <laughs> like, it's really not what it seems. And like, most of us become a bad bitch because we were bullied into being a bad bitch. Growing up, I was always called a goody two shoes. I became the doormat. I became the loser of the family. I was always the mom of the friend group. I was a mom before I don't even have kids and I was a mom. Like I'm the stereotyped mom. So growing up, watching Regina George, watching all these bad, Helga Pataki, <laughs> watching all these baddies on online, on TV, on Tumblr, just watching all these girls like, yo, oh my God, she's on the internet in her underwear and nobody gives a fuck? Oh my God, like she's just dating all these guys and these guys respect her? Oh my God, this, this, that, and the third. Obviously someone who goes to church on Sunday every single Sunday and is living the life of a motherfucking prude would gravitate towards that because I don't want to be that dumb bitch that I was being before if I'm going to be a bitch I might as well be a bad bitch okay so I'm studying how to be a bad bitch. I'm sitting in college classes, reposting on Tumblr. Oh my God, look at that bad bitch. Oh my God, look at those nudes she's sending to those guys. Oh my God, look at those sex tapes she's sending. Oh my God, look at this, look at that, look at that. I'm like, oh my God, I love that. Anything is better than being the dumb bitch who's taking care of a family of narcissists. Oh my God, I, was, I love that. So I'm studying that bada bing bada boom. At the time, I was heavier. And I'm just like, okay, how do I do this? How do I do this? Eating disorder. Okay, <laughs> check. And I'm eating, eating disordering it up. Oh my God, no guy has ever liked me before. The first guy that comes my way that I would never choose in my right mind today. Oh my God, he likes me. He kissed me. Oh my God, my first kiss. Oh my God, this prudish girl who goes to church every Sunday, who's a dumb bitch for her disloyal family. Okay, first kiss, check. Oh my God, I'm so thirsty and I'm so horny and I've never felt these feelings. All I used to do was sit and read romance novels in my book because I was being a dumb bitch. Um, okay, I have a real life guy who real life likes me. Oh my God, okay, I wish upon a star like it's fucking a fairy tale. Oh my God, I wish he would have sex with me. Oh my God. And then boom, we do that. And then boom, activated bad bitch trauma let's live the tale of the bad bitch you see where i'm going with this <laughs> where in any of that was that fun it wasn't fun but it seemed fun from the perception of being the doormat bitch the dumb bitch because women before we get to the stages where i'm at right now called enlightenment <laughs> waking the fuck up <laughs> throwing away all the mask that we were projecting on and that we took on because we need to be fighters and we need to be strong and we need to fuck the system and we need to do all these things that i don't know who the fuck told us because all god wants us to do is just be pretty 
all God wants us to do is simply be pretty. Okay. When I, before, like I was living that life, I was living the life of a bitch because women in that institutionalized world, I'm not even going to call it patriarchy because that's giving men too much credit. Okay. Women played a part in the patriarchy and are getting away with it. And you're not going to get away with it here. Okay. So institutionalization of woman equals a bitch. Regardless if she's a dumb bitch, a good bitch, a bad bitch, she's a rabid bitch with rabies. <laughs> okay. And this goes for anybody who takes on the word bad bitch. It's not just women. Okay. If you're a man who is into the bad bitch culture, this applies to you too as well. And to the little kiddos out there who are looking way more grown than they should, attracting way more grown energies than they should, I know you're on here. Pay attention before you get caught up in some shit that no one tells you about. AKA some shit where, like me, got set up by a bad bitch and didn't even realize it and was really livid for a really long time. <laughs> So, um, institutionalized, rabid fucking dog. It's either you're prude or it's either you're a sleut. Either way, from the institutionalized point of view, it's all dissatisfying and it all sucks. And it all leaves women in a fucking trap. So we jump into the, okay, we, we're, we're trapped. Let's be trapped in a way that makes us feel like we have any sort of say in our life. So after I did the studying of the tumbling and then I finally got activated by losing my virginity, virginity because that's what virginity does, it activates you because it's the first rebellious choice you make on your own. After that, eating disorder shows up after that, I'm, I become obsessed with this guy. I become manipulated with this guy that doesn't even deserve me. Shout out to you, dollar sign. <laughs> keep, keep going. <laughs> Run it up. <laughs> um, so going, going into the, the, the storyline of a bad bitch, because they don't tell you that. That's the type of life that we live in. The things you want to be from an institutionalized mindset is never what you think it is. It's always way fucking worse. So th those people that go from being a bad bitch to church, it's still going to suck. And going from church to being a bad bitch, it's still the fucking same thing. There's no empowerment unless you do the work to understand why do I feel like I need to go from from sluting it up to church? And why do I feel like I need to go from church to sluting it up? It doesn't make any sense. I start picking up all the bad bitch trauma and nonsense because genuinely I did grow up a traumatic life. And that's the story of women. That's how come we jump from one extreme to the other extreme and the other extreme to the other extreme. We do so because we are trying to get out. We are trying to get out of these traps any way that we can. And that's what everybody is trying to do in this world, which is why people just give up and unalive themselves. Because there are energies in control of you until you are able to jump yourself out of that nonsense. And it is painful, which is why when you choose the bad bitch route, it's pretty much as similar to the church route. Church is a cult, okay? Just like being a bad bitch is a cult energy. You have to act bad. You have to get money. You have to get the bag. You have to play guys. You have to do this. You have to kiss a few girls. You have to do this. You got to do that. You got to do that. All leading to an extremely unsatisfying life. AKA an unsatisfying culture. Once you're done doing that, the next thing you have to do is go get a BBL. 
The next thing you have to do is go get a BBL, bro. That's the next step. To complete your bad bitch transformation, you need to go get a BBL. And then you need to go have a baby with a with a deadbeat father. <laughs> That's the end of the bad bitch era. If you haven't seen, look at people like Lana Rhodes. Beautiful girl got fucked over by a deadbeat man and is carrying around a baby that... A lot of women say they love being single moms, but I fucking doubt that. Look at Krishan Rock, bro. She's a fire person. She was a ride or die for someone who didn't deserve it. And now she's over here crying on Jason Lee because she's mommy and daddy. That's not, okay, bad bitch life, for, that's not me. <laughs> that's not me. I, I would remember having conversations with people where I would be like, yeah, I'm okay with being a single mom because of the trauma I went through, because I lived with a man and a woman who were married, but the father was never around. So basically, oop, my bad y'all. <laughs> basically, she was a single mother. And I grew up under that fucking terror and narcissism no wonder I wanted to be a bad bitch and rebel, rebel. But it's not, it's not fun. Like if you really looked into the lives of the city girls for real, Carisha's not happy. JT's not happy. It doesn't matter how many Maybach trucks somebody gets you. The sex is bad. The sex is bad. A lot of these guys, a lot of guys out there suck in bed. Like they actually do, especially the ones you're attracted to, because the ones you're attracted to are the ones that you're trying to heal a mommy or a daddy wound that will never heal if you keep giving yourself to the wrong guys under the guise that you're a bad bitch. I realized yesterday I was doing a live and a, a couple of times I've been called a good girl and one person said it to me and it really turned me. I was like, ew, ugh. And not even like, uh, like this, like, oh, I'm a bad bitch, shut the fuck up. No, it was more like, ew, don't ever say those words to me again. Yesterday, some guy told me, he was like, oh, I apologize. I got the wrong assumption of you. You, you are a good girl. And when I saw it, I wasn't offended, but it made me think. What do you mean by that? Is there something I'm fucking missing here? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm missing it because I've been pretending to be a bad bitch. <laughs> I've been pretending to be... I'm not a bad bitch, bro. I'm not. I'm not a fucking dog. I'm a cat. <laughs> I'm a cat. I'm a cat. I am a free spirit. I'm a wild being. Someone who chills does their own thing and lives a fun domesticated life i love being domesticated domestication has nothing to do with what you're thinking about either domestication is about being soft it's moving beyond the primal because being a bad bitch is primal like that's in us it's in us to go against this and against that and blah 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 and everything else that we're supposedly fighting for but it's all just a facade anyway be a cat as a woman be a cat look at cats like i love my cat bro my cat i look up to my cat okay my cat <laughs> what does my cat do my cat chills, my cat observes, my cat communicates with the unseen. My cat is living a very blessed life. Taken care of, doctor's appointments, never has to pay for anything, eats good, sleeps good. Is exact. I put money into my cat, okay? So I'm over here being a bad bitch. Where's the money? <laughs> Why am I overworked? Why am I tired? Why am I eight years celibate still? Like, why are all these questions happening? Why isn't it I can't attract a, a guy that will stay? Because I'm, I'm being bad. I'm being bad. And I'm tired of being bad. It starts off because, like I said, 
there are actual bad bitches in this world. And I grew around, I grew up around them. Women who want what I innately have, which is God's love. And because they don't have God's love, and they have to imitate it and mimic it, aka sociopaths, psychopaths, and narcissists, they beat it out of you. They bully it out of you. They gang stalk it out of you. They come on social media and make fake profiles about you. They try and set you up. They do everything that they can to ensure that you are never the person that you're actually supposed to be, which is a good girl. Now, what is a good girl? A good girl is a girl who leads with her femininity. A good girl is a girl who is graceful as fuck, who uses her words and not her fist. A good girl is a girl who comes off stoic, cold, you know, but radiates so much warmth that she naturally compels the room to look at her. A good girl is the life of the party with the heart of a lion that doesn't roar for attention. You see, the thing is they're not selling you a good girl good enough because they don't want you to be a good girl because when you're a good girl, you're going to have men wrapped around your finger like no other. You know how many men hit me up every single day because I live my authentic life, because coming across me is like coming across some sort of rare anomaly that doesn't exist. Like, how the fuck are you real? Which is why when I did give guys attention from the bad bitch persona, it always blew up in my face. It doesn't matter how much advice you take from Sprinkle Sprinkle. <laughs> If you're not who you are, you're not who you are. And God will keep attracting to you for you the worst of the worst. Like I was attracting guys. I was attracting celebrity guys. I was attracting tall guys, short guys, athletes, all sorts of guys. But I was wondering, why are they so sassy? Why are they so zesty? Why are they showing up in ways that are not the whole package? Like, you'd be surprised some of these celebrity guys out there, what's really going on behind the scenes. And us bad bitches have to deal with it. Because that's what I, th I, I don't even think the city girls are bad bitches. I really don't. They want to be wives. They want to be mothers. They want to be soft. But their one foot is stuck in the door and, and one foot is out the other. And then they're dating men that can't even handle their hearts. They can't even handle their souls. So they take the big empty house as love. They take the big empty Maybox as love. They take the 50 million Birkins as love. No, no, I want a man who can emotionally support me, who is emotionally mature, who is mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically strong, a big boy. That's what Sis is talking about. It's coffee season and all the girls are need. I need a big boy. I need a big boy. I need a big boy. That is what she's talking about. She needs a strong man. She needs a grown person. We get so offended when people call us good girls or big boys or you know women don't like being called girls but at the end of the day nothing's wrong with that it's cute it's sweet we know what time it is if you're mature you're mature it doesn't matter if someone calls you a girl or a woman who fucking cares who cares so if you're actually a good girl out there please be a good girl please join the wave please just be who you are and I'm not saying you have to drop the aesthetic because I love the aesthetic too, <laughs> okay? That's what drew me in. It's just, what is the foundation? <laughs> Once you know the foundation, run away from the label. Take what you like from life and stop putting yourself in boxes. 
All right, let's see. Let's see what's going on in the comments. Wow, there's a lot of comments. Okay. Okay, I got a fax from Charles Holland. Thank you for the compliment. I was sold the wrong dream, just like a lot of us are sold the wrong dream. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> These are funny comments. Oh, God. The fake hair comment from, I'm sure he's a black man, uh, is not getting an explanation. You're entertained because I'm entertaining. LOL, these funny people. What the fuck? She gets enough prayers. She doesn't need mine. Yo, man, that's so funny now. I will not do that, but she is definitely an interesting person to try and come here on my live through her manipulated fans. It's so funny when I read troll accounts, I can literally hear the voice of the person behind it. <laughs> it's so funny. No, actually, I'm going to keep that secret to myself. Oh, my God. Jeez Louise. Okay, let's see. Hello, hello. Anyways, so in life, something people have to learn is that it is totally 100% okay to be in control, in charge of who you are. And I know the world tries to put us in boxes and it's because of this hypnotic rhythm. It just becomes like, it's like natural that we fall into boxes and we don't even realize it. But when you're in that box and you're still, you still don't fit in, because that was a problem of mine, trying to fit in when I know I'm not here to fit in. I know I'm here to be an anomaly. So why the fuck was I trying? I'm here to create my own archetype and be my, just be my own person. We're all here to be our own individual selves and we're all here to play with the different dynamics that earth um, externalizes to us which is why I'm not really angry about the things that have occurred in my life because I've always been following intuitive guidance and that's what honestly it is rare you know yet hopefully people find my page and they realize like oh my god I can change without having to like jump from one extreme to the other extreme it's good to take some pieces from it's well first of all your foundation always has to be god what is God? Creation. What is creation? Love. So you always have to build on that foundation of self internally. Internally. That's why I said church is a cult. Because anything that makes you believe in anything outside of yourself is cult mentality. It's always about what's in here that is true to me that reflect that projects itself out here and reiterates that story to me over and over again so that I cycle out and up rather than down downward and we know where that downward cycling goes
Yo, Indy, bada bing, bada boom. But then that that pleads the case. Are we really individuals then? No. It's so odd to me. Wounded people are odd to me, bro. Oh my God. Wounded people are odd. Like I was, I was told I was an odd weirdo my whole entire life. But now that I'm actually seeing my true colors and living from my true light, I'm looking at these oddballs around me. I'm looking at these oddballs online and I'm just like, Imagine being so in pain that you have to bully people out of their light because you weren't born with light. And that's true. There's levels to light. There is levels to light. And the fact that they're making everybody believe they're chosen ones and the fact that they're making everybody believe that they're light and they're alien and they're cosmic and they're divine and all. No, no. They're gaslighting you to stay living in hell. When your life, when you're like 50 and your life hasn't changed. Yeah. (laughs) And you don't know how to get out of it because you've been so deluded. People aren't even using the word delusion right. Delusion from a low vibrational standpoint is where most people live. Telling the truth is not delusional. I know you've been brainwashed into believing that the truth is delusional when it's not. (laughs) When the mask that people wear, because people are out here really playing a game. People are really out here playing like it's Magic the Gathering 2.0, literally. And then it's like a mix of like Spongebob Squarepants on Nintendo DS. It's weird watching full grown adults play with people's lives. Watching full grown adults do things that you would only see in movies. It's weird. And then if you're the one person who's like, okay, I don't want to play with you anymore. Like, I'm leaving this weird sandbox and I'm going to go play in my own sandbox. And, like, if anyone who vibes with me wants to come, like, you can come. If not, I'm cool. I'll play by myself. The fact that they don't want you to play in your own sandbox is weird. Like, I, I remember growing up playing, like, checkers and Monopoly with people who would get mad at me for winning. People who would openly cheat and I would call them out and they would be like, no, I didn't cheat. And then they grow to be cheaters and everybody's in the courtroom like, why did this person go to jail for money laundering? Why did this person go to jail for axing that guy? If you observe their energy from jump, you would know why. It's not hard. That's why we have to develop. It's from a childhood thing. We just have to accept that there's people out there who suck. And suck is putting it very kindly. You are who you are from out the womb. And this has nothing to do with conditioning. The conditioning, just like in sports either makes you stronger or you quit. And most people quit. And only a few like me were made stronger. And those few like me who were made stronger continue to do what we do because we deeply understand that any voice that hears us is healed automatically. There's no propaganda here. I don't spend billions of dollars on Super Bowl ads (laughs) to get you to like 
my product. It's either you like my product or not. Because I don't need you. That's what individual the individual individuality does, which is why it's a problem. Because if you're an individual, you realize I don't need the group. I don't need a village physically to take care of me. With the foundation of God, the literal house of God, aka your body, taking care of you, with that true connection to the unseen, your spirit guiding you. There's no need for 50 million opinions about your choice in life. Ashe. No, smart almighty, you are allowed to be an individual. I am telling you right now, I did it. You have to be able to tell yourself you can do it. Generational cycles of pain. Here's the thing. People really hold on to this like generational court curse bullshit. And honestly, like I know myself too. Like I literally had to forgive my ancestors today. Because I realized, like, this is bigger than me. Like, it was those MFers that did some wild, and I was born into it. They chose me, though. So at the same time, I'm honored and grateful that I was the one who broke the cycle. So it's all about perspective. That's that individuality. Am I going to sit and wallow? with ancestors that don't want me to win or am I going to chill and vibe with ancestors that are like yo we're here for you we've got the tools we know what to do we lived it we fucked up let's help I'd rather go that route and that's the route that I chose and that's the route that most people don't understand like they're telling you pray to your ancestors this that leave offerings this that you better watch out who you're praying to Someone over here said, pray to some celebrity I won't name. <laughs> that celebrity's got you whipped with some nice witchcraft. Hey, and if y'all knew what the fuck was going on with your favorite celebrities, you would take a break from going to their shows because you're being manipulated by a demon. <laughs> so that you don't take all the blame big king i'm gonna pin this comment this is this is what you need to know our individual heaven and hell is created from the first being that incarnated wherever it first incarnated And there is a storyline that's playing out. So every lifetime in the same breath is doing what it can to get out while also healing, which is why we can't really place blame anywhere. And then when it finally gets to you, the person that was chosen from the beginning of the storyline. We are, as an individual, you are given every single thing you need to successfully exit or successfully die in hell. And most people do the latter. So, yes, as an individual, in your lifetime, you are either creating your heaven or adding to your hell. And now your ancestors were doing the same thing. It's just as the individual lifetime currently, I get to live out with my ancestry, the heaven on earth we have been building as a unit 
since the beginning of that first incarnation. Well, you know, life is really like Hunger Games from the institutionalized point of view. It's literally like you're in jail. And the we're all our all our goal as as a unit, as a family is to get out. And if there's one person that doesn't need help getting out and can get out on their own, rather than watch that one person and observe how they can get out too, they feel like, okay, we got to bring out the knives, the guns. We got to bring out everything that we can. We got to throw stones. We got to bring out crucifixes. We got to do X, Y, Z. And we got to nail this person to the cross. Yet the thing is that you as an individual have to realize what I was saying. You are being targeted for your light. And not because they want your light. Yes, they feed off it. And yes, for a, a minute, they're going to feed off you. But that's part of your strength. Because what those people don't understand and what the individual who has the light has difficulty understanding is this. Those people feeding off you and you waking the fuck up and them throwing stones at you and, and doing everything they can is making you stronger. The whole time, these vampires were sucking your blood, not knowing that they were just getting rid of the gunk. That's all they were doing, was getting rid of the gunk, bro. And they were helping you do it quicker. Because now, they're sucking blood that is putrid. It's nasty. It's disgusting. It's the blood of their bullying ways. It's the blood of your false perceptions. It's the blood of everything you're not. <laughs> Which is what Jesus died on the cross for. So, once you get to the light, that's when these people are throwing everything at you. And you're the one who exits without a scar, without a bruise. Everybody's claiming it's magic. When it was simply enlightenment. <laughs> Literally, that's what enlightenment is. That's what all these people are saying. That's what all these video essays are trying to get to. That's why they're an hour long because they just can't explain it to you like a fifth grader. That's why I'm here. Hello. Break them and don't just talk about breaking them. Actually take that God-given gift called action. Inspired action. Take those risks, real risks. Don't go jumping off cliffs, literally. Jump off those cliffs spiritually. And they usually look like confronting your very first demons, aka your parents. And secondly, your brothers and sisters. Or whoever else is closest to you from out the womb. <laughs> Thank you, Sable. I appreciate it. No, I get it. I get what you're saying. That's how come when I talk about things, it's never from an absolute place of like totally disregard the baddie. No, it's more like a accept the fact that you're wearing a mask and figure your fucking life out. <laughs> That's basically what I'm saying. Omar. I'm doing great. I'm good. I'm good. I'm great actually. Because I choose to be an authentic being who accepts her many personalities. Something they don't want you to, to know. They want you to take drugs so that you can be a flatline dead human being. So that the ones in power, you know what the thing is? Everybody is so scared of this like elite and these like top dog celebrities 
and all of this stuff. And like, these people need their fandom. Do you understand that without you, they're nothing? Which is why they gaslight you with their thank yous and their pitiful advice. Think of your number one celebrity right now. They'd be nothing without you. They'd literally be who they are, a ghost, dead. They, they live off you. They do spell work before their shows to have you hypnotized and have you not see that they're barely moving anymore. You're paying hundreds of dollars to go watch someone barely move to the point where they have to, have their, they have to use their kid to get attention. Yes, I've heard of that. I have definitely heard of gang stalking for sure. I just mentioned it earlier. Don't get, don't stay a target. You have to remember that you're the target because you're the one. Be the one, not the two, three, four, five, seven, eight millionth. Scared of people who barely have any gusto to do anything. Literally, they don't have anything to do. And all you have to do is pray. Pray to God and you're a-okay. And take those, take those towers to the chin. You really have to, it's not going to be a smooth road. It's not, it's hard. I'm, I'm talking very confidently from a place of <laughs> having been through the ringer for the God within me. It's not easy. But when you do it, the benefits are beautiful skin. is so funny yo man i love that we're in an era now where celebrity culture is dying celebrity culture is freaking canceled and i i'm only i i don't think celebrities will ever be non-existent like people love that lifestyle but the thing is i'm saying the old way that it was full of people who kill people to be number one <laughs> yeah that's not a that's not allowed anymore. God said no. You're not going to kill my people anymore. You're not going to get away with killing my people. No. Because when you really think about it, look at it like this. Like I've said time and time again, many of these celebrities are doing things with teams of people that if you knew, you would lose all respect for them. Y'all get mad when you realize rappers don't rap their raps. Imagine what you, if you knew what basketball do, players do to win the championship rings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These people are regular people at the end of the day who have complexes, who have illnesses, who are disturbed, who want to win. But we're no longer in the era of the cheater, scammer, liar, antagonizer, false teller, mask wearing, bumbaclap, <laughs> winning. We're not there anymore. We're beyond that. Thank God. And thank God to my ancestors for choosing me for this lifetime where that's possible. Which is why you need to connect with them. Which is why you need to love them. Because without the benevolent ones, you have to be specific. Without the benevolent ones. Without them, you're dealing with the, with the ancestors that hate your guts. They hate you for being the one. And when you're the one... You're fighting more than the external reality on a physical level. On a, if you cut yourself, you're bleeding level. Like you're dealing with mental, emotional, spiritual levels of life. They never include emotional when they're talking or spiritual. It's always mental or physical. Why? Why are emotions such an L? Because emotions are the key to the first door you have to open 
to waking the fuck up. Without that first tear, crying, I don't know who I am, who am I? <laughs> the first tear, tear out of the spell, like in Get Out, the first tear during all the mind control that is like, this is not me, stop it. Stop it, but I'm paralyzed. What do I do? Oh my God, oh my God. That first tear is all God needs to know. All right, my child woke up. Okay, now I'm gonna pull in the troops. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the angels. I'm gonna get the demons. I'm gonna get the everything for you. I will pull out the, I will do it for you. That's what they're not teaching you at church, which is why they read the same fucking scriptures every single year. That's why they light the candles the way they light the candles. That's why the frankincense. That's why the blood of Christ. That's why everything is a fucking spell. That's why they use their hands the way they use their hands. That's why they wear the robes and the colors. If you knew the energy that was really guiding the Catholic faith, one, you would laugh. <laughs> okay, you would laugh. Because they make it seem like they're holier than thou. And then when you realize what the fuck they're actually worshiping, you would laugh. And two, it's just pathetic. Money is a joke, bruh. Money is a joke majority of the time because the person behind the money is a shrimp, is a loser. L-D-E. Microscopic L-D-E. That's what I should have named this. <laughs> I actually like that nickname. That's cute. Double bubble. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Quick to diagnose, but not willing to understand the experience. I've definitely dealt with many doctors. And this is a sarcastic smile. Who fit that bill. <laughs> Which is why you're better off being your own doctor. Smart man, you get a pinned comment once this one goes away. Um... That's what every, and it's always the people who are so fucked up that are diagnosing people. Like, what? Ugh, anyway. Okay, Spar, I'm gonna pin your comment in three, two, one. Boom, right there. Yeah, man. So, it's, it's a combination of being and doing better like you just have to be and do it at the same time like i y'all i am like literally on a roll thank god and i'm on a roll because of god because that god is inside of me because i am praising and honoring and revering there's no worship here Worship tends to lean on the side of idolization. Everything, parts of the Bible that still remain true are talking about. Like literally look at like, everyone talks about God, but every version of God is some sort of statue, some sort of box, some sort of gold, some sort of symbol. A symbol is one thing. But when you're literally kneeling in front of a statue and praying to it, giving it energy, a sp it's a spirit now. It's alive now. And that's how human beings have got here. Because we created an energy that is so draining. It needs a name worse than Satan. <laughs> This is an energy that controls us day in and day out. 
that's what we're married to. We're like bonded to this energy because of how much we fed it with horrible choices and decisions that our bloodlines will not cycle out of unless someone chooses to be the cycle outer. Unless someone has the balls, the cojones, man, to be that bitch. <laughs> and there, there's the end of the, there's the end of the live, bruh. There's the end of the live. Good night. I will see you guys another day. <laughs>